Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice, and we are going to amplify your morning routine in 15 minutes or less today, which I'm excited for. Um, I don't know if I have a morning routine now that I'm thinking about it. So maybe I'll take detailed notes on this episode. Um, but no, I have a special guest with me, Megan Nolan, a wellness coach. And before we go any further, Megan, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. So I will start off by saying that you do have a morning routine. Oh, Question I'm getting called is, out already. How meaningful is it? Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> and I've been shamed less than 60 seconds into the episode, which I no. love. Let's unpack this because I'm not alone, I'm sure. There's probably a bunch of people listening who are like, yeah, I just get up and then all of a sudden I'm, I'm doing work. So we need to unpack this and set the stage. I know I used to have a morning routine in the past that was uh, way more intentional. And you feel the difference when you have an intentional morning routine. More than that, something that's designed to get you a better outcome. So let's set the stage there and and define because you called me out, how do you define a morning routine of meaning? Well, you used a great word that I will definitely repeat is intentional because I, you know, I didn't mean to call you out, but I meant to be a bit cheeky because the thing is we all do, we all have a morning routine. It's whether it's moving you towards your vision and your goals, helping you to start the day, feeling grounded, feeling strong, feeling happy and energized, or is it grabbing your phone and looking at all the notifications and jumping right in and then making your way to your desk. And all of a sudden, before you know it, it's 12 o'clock and you only have coffee in your tummy and you're kind of cranky and your body hurts. So that's really, you know, the intentionality is how I define a meaningful morning routine. And I'm not somebody who is going to tell you that there's all sorts of rules to it. What I like to do is look at those people that we, you know, many of us will agree are very successful, very impactful, who are huge advocates for their morning routine because it's become a non-negotiable, you know, like Tony Robbins, Oprah Winfrey, Ariana Huffington, Brandon Bouchard, probably names your, your community has heard of. They will always start the day with intention and something for themselves because of the tone it sets for the day. But it doesn't have to be their routine. In fact, I would say finding one that works for you is even better. It doesn't have to be at 5 a.m. It doesn't have to be anything other than things that help you to align with your vision, help your body to feel strong and healthy and energized, help you to get in the right state of being that aligns you on every level. And I mean, because yoga and the tools that I share are so incredible and they are doing that all at once, it becomes very efficient and very effective, but it's really about having the most important meaning of the day, the one that you have with yourself. Mm, I love that. And um, yeah, I, I think the thing that kind of had me fall off of my more intentional morning routine, if you will. Um, a number of years ago, I read the book, uh, the miracle morning. Have you, have you read it? Have you heard of it? Yeah. So I like the book. I like the author really good, good ideas and purpose behind it, but it was, it was very rigid and it was very structured and it wasn't mine, which you've, you've kind of touched on. And that's why I just, I fell away from it. And I, I do have a morning routine at this point, but it's not like, it's not some elaborate thing that i I really think about it. it's just you know the series of steps that I go through. I do feel different when I don't do it, but tell me about how we go about designing a morning routine around ourselves, our lifestyles, and we don't. I mean, it's good to look at those big gurus who you named, but how do we also not copy them? Because I think that leads to morning routine burnout faster than maybe a productive morning routine. And I am I onto something there? And how do you how do you do that? 100% onto something. And I agree with you completely. I think it's important to look at the suggestions that are made in that book, look at the things people say and look at the, the principles, right? And look at that from a strategic point of view, because myself, and I'm sure many of your community members, women, our energy varies drastically throughout the month. And even as men, like it's going to, or, you know, wherever you identify, 
depending on how you sleep, depending on your food that you ate, like it's going to be different day to day. And so having something that's rigid doesn't necessarily work. And for people like myself that are neurodivergent, it's like, it just gets really overwhelming. And so it's, how can we look at it from the point of view of what's really essential here? And what is essential for you to get to the finish line of your goals from a perspective of both your energy, your clarity of mind, your emotional state, but also the physicality of it? Because, you know, a lot of people forget this because we're so creative and inspirational and motivated and all the things as entrepreneurs and business owners that we spend a lot of time from the neck up and living as an out of body experience. But you also have a body that is needing things, right? And it's kind of like, you are a Tesla, essentially, as long as you plug it in and charge it and put all the you know fuels. I don't think Teslas have fuels, but I don't know. I could be wrong. Regular cars have other things that you have to put in it, but we forget that we have a body. And so when we kind of break it down to the core essential elements, it comes back to your mind, your body, and your spirit. And your spirit essentially is your nervous system. So we'll talk about how to come into the day from a regulated state, which will then impact your communication, your body language, how people read and perceive you. So let's start at the beginning is the three core pillars of amplifying your morning routine. The first pillar is to align your mind with your vision. And so this is where you can kind of pick and choose what works for you. And some people really like to do journaling, or maybe that's prayer, or maybe that's, you know, a technique called tapping. So you're tapping on meridian points as you're stating different things or you're emotionally processing things. Um, that can be meditation. It can be visualization, gratitude journaling. So that's the first component is really getting into that mental clarity state, the vibe of your vision, I call it, because we are emotional beings and it's important for us to stay in alignment with our vision from that strategic sense of it's top of mind. You're visualizing yourself cast or doing the thing or whatever it is, right? And so that's the first pillar. So align your mind. That's the first one. Did you have any questions about that? No, this is great. I, and I want to also get into obviously how we can do this in 15 minutes. So we're going to start, you always start with the mind, aligning the mind. Yes. Okay. All right. Because, step two okay. Oh, no, step two. no, no. Um, well, yeah, because the reason is, is that we want, and you can mix and match again. I don't want to have any hard and fast rules to this, but this is the way that I find it's easiest to do it because we wake up and sometimes our body's not necessarily ready to like jump into the next pillar just yet. And in fact, it's, it's, ideal for us to sort of have some time where we're just sitting and we're letting the spinal fluids recalibrate because it gets our spine, the disc between the spine get a little swollen at nighttime. So that's why we kind of feel a little bit stiff and cranky in the morning. And so having that time where you're just kind of being in your body and breathing and, and aligning the mind as a starting point is just where I like to jump in. But again, mix and match, make it your own. So that first pillar really kind of sets that internal state. And then the second pillar is move your body. So move your body can be whatever you like. Maybe you want to go out and go for a run. Maybe you go for a walk on the beach with your doggy. Maybe you dance. Maybe you like yoga. Maybe you like cardio, whatever it is. Something that invigorates and activates your physical body because exercise in the morning is shown to potentially boost productivity by upwards of 72%. 72% increase is drastic. And it's something we're looking for, right? More intentionality in your thoughts, a happier, more grounded mood, more creativity, more patience, a nicer human to be around are all beautiful things that are directly impacting your productivity. So it also boosts your metabolic rate. So you're burning more calories throughout the day. But when it comes to the physicality of your body, you're not a rock, right? You're not meant to be sitting stationary behind a computer all day long. Yet most people spend anywhere between six and eight, sometimes more hours every day sitting, most of which is spent slouching. So we want to make sure that we are activating your body, getting into strong posture, because that really invigorates you from the reasons I just mentioned, but it also affects your body language. And your body is constantly communicating to your mind, more so than your mind is communicating to your body, actually, because it's a two-way pathway, but more information comes from your body up to your brain. And that will impact your nervous system state. But it also affects your mental state. Posture and, and mental state and emotional state have a direct relationship with each other. Think about it. You think about somebody who's sad. 
you don't need to show me, but I know you know what it looks like, right? We know what it looks like when we're feeling defeated, but we also know what it looks like when we're like, yes, look at I just crushed it. Like it's a totally different energy. So what you're doing there is you're hacking the system a little bit, is you're invigorating your body and you're getting into that power pose and you're getting into that confident posture. So you're communicating that to yourself now, but then you go into the day that way. So that's why move your body is second pillar. You call me out again. I'm 100% slouching right now. If you're listening, I'm slouching. If you're watching, well, you can just see it. But <laughs> but no, that makes complete sense. And I, I love the the move your body because, the yeah, the, you made the point. We, we're all sitting behind computers for most of the day. Um, mm -hmm. I think, I, I think uh, COVID was probably the worst thing for this because now that most of us are working from home, it's even worse, I would assume. At least when you were in an office, you, you could get up and go talk to other people. Now it's like I stare at a wall for most of the day. Most people do. Um, mm -hmm. what, what kind of tips do you have to, before we get to pillar number three, I, I personally believe that motion is super important throughout the day. What tips do you have to keep that going throughout the day? Like, do you have designated breaks or do you just like instinctually do it? That's a great question. You're hundred percent correct. Is that there was a massive shift, obviously for all of us out of, you know, the reality of the pandemic. Um, but most people's work from home setups are not ergonomically correct. Most people spend a lot of time sitting, you know, a lot of people ended up working at their dining room table. And as you said, we didn't have as much movement. And, and if you think about it, if you work from home, like I'm looking from my office, I can see how far I've traveled from my bedroom. It's not very far. Right. And so we don't have that same amount of movement. And so we want to make sure that we are first moving our body in the morning to do everything we just talked about, because there's also such a thing as active sedentary, because that 30 minutes of exercise in the morning doesn't really do much to balance out the eight plus hours of sitting and slouching throughout the rest of the day. So you made a really good point about having intentional breaks. Because when we were children and we went to school, the teachers were like, get out of here, go outside, right? And so we got sent outside for probably for their benefit and sanitary, <laughs> sanity. but um, but also for our own, because the brain, our brains are so amazing, right? We're just learning more and more about them all the time, but about have about a 45 minute capacity for clear functioning, direct ability to pay attention before it starts to kind of bing, ding, ding, ding and bounce all over the place. And so you can use that to your benefit by, using what's called the Pomodoro technique. Perhaps you've heard of it from a productivity performance, you know, perspective. It's a lot of peace there. I love alliterations. <laughs> it really allows us to go all in, right? We go all in for a set amount of time, 25 minutes, 45 minutes, and then we pause, we get up and we move. So we take what I call a power pause. So you get up, you know, and you can sync this up because when we're looking at creating new habits, we do, usually do best if you link it to something you're already going to do. So if you're being a really amazing hydrating human and you're drinking lots of water throughout the day, you need to get up and go to the toilet at some point, you know, usually about every hour if you're well hydrated. So when you get up to go to the toilet, don't just go rushing back to the computer. Take some minutes, you know, you could do some squats, you could do some just like chest opening movements. Think, remember that scene on the Titanic where Kate's at the end of the Titanic and she's got her arms back and their hair's blowing in the wind. So it's called a posture break. You just stand up and you open your body up. Think about a time when you've been on a long flight or a car ride. Instinctively, humans will like reach and stretch. Or if you have a dog, they do this so beautifully. Like they're a great reminder. So if well, on your way back from the toilet, do a little power pause, do some stretches, do some squats. Maybe you have a dog that needs to go outside. Go outside with the dog. Don't stand there on your phone checking your notifications. Like ground yourself. Be there present with your dog, you know, whatever it is. Because again, as you mentioned, most of us are sitting and staring at a screen or staring at a wall. A lot of what we are dealing with from our focus and our productivity and our mood really comes from a, a postural fatigue, a visual fatigue. So our eyes get tired of looking at something close by. So while you're outside and you're letting the dog go pee and you're not on your phone because you left it inside because you're listening, you're outside and you're letting your eyes go wide. So you're looking as far away as you can see because that's what our ancestors used to do. They'd be out scanning the horizon for dinosaurs and stuff like that. But us, we're like, we sit at our phone like here. You know, most people have their phone down by their belly button. So it causes the whole cascade of issues that we can talk about from a postural point of view. But go outside, you know, if you have a dog, whatever. If not, 
on your way back from the bathroom, don't go right back to the computer, either close your eyes or look as far as you can see. And what that does is it widens the lens. It allows your eyes to diverge, right? So they're looking out, they're going wider, they're separating. And that in and of itself is really soothing and calming and grounding for your nervous system, but it also decreases visual fatigue, which can cause headaches, weak posture, scrunching of the eyes, all of those things. Um, so those are some tips. I think I got like a little distracted <laughs> with a bunch of other things, but I hope I answered your question. <laughs> no, those are super important tips though too. And okay. I, I want to highlight the, the one, especially about your vision. We spend so much time looking at screens, whether it's your job is looking at a screen, we're addicted to our phones, it seems like these days. Um, and this just happened to me uh, literally like a week or two ago. I I had spent the whole week pretty much, like we were knee deep in a project and I was on my computer the whole week, which usually I do take time to take breaks. By the end of the week, I noticed that I had like a black spot in my eye. And yeah. I, I started to get super freaked out. Like I almost went to the eye doctor. All I did to cure it was the next day, no screens at all. I was outside. I just moved and was looking in the distance and it magically went away on its own. But I realized like, whoa, I really got to pause and do exactly what you said. Like if you're looking at a screen all day, your computer's probably one to two feet away from your face. Your mm -hmm. phone's about the same. Like you mm -hmm. need to separate from that, that awful, harmful light for a good amount of time throughout the day, especially before you go to bed. Um, so yes. I just want to drive that point home from personal experience. And that also helps your productivity and your focus and concentration. We're wrapping this whole conversation together. So um, that's awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. And to your point, um, the American Posture, Posture Institution recently did a training that I was so fascinated by. But one of the take homes that they really, really kind of blew my mind a little bit is that posture is declining at the rate of technological advances. That's so the awesome. more we become advanced with technology, the worse our posture gets. And they call it, hold on to your phone. No, put it down instead. A postural de-evolution. Oh. Yeah, it's not good. Doesn't look cute either. <laughs> no, I've seen the uh, like the, the images and projections of what human beings will look like in like 100 years after all this technology. And we look gross. We look like aliens, like all hunched over and your hands are brick shaped because your phone's... Don't be like that. Put your phones down. All right, Megan, that's disgusting. Let's move on. <laughs> What's tip number three? Right. Tip number three, pillar number three. Okay, so we aligned our body, or sorry, we aligned our mind, we move our body. And then the third one is repeat. <laughs> repeat. Oh, you got to do it again. I know. I know. So, first thing I want you to repeat are a tool that I use called power statements. So, once you've aligned your mind and you know the version of you that is living in your vision, the you know, the quote unquote best version of you, the one that's confident and grounded and happy and creative and all those things, we want to take that information. And this is using, you know, a model people are probably familiar with of the be, do, have. So we're being that version of ourself now by fully activating and embodying those characteristics of ourself now so that we don't have to wait till we have the thing to be quote unquote happy. We want to begin to embody that and practice that now. So a way that we can do that are with power statements. Sometimes they're called affirmations. Sometimes people call them mantras or intentions or, you know, just happy empowering statements. But what I want you to do is throughout your morning routine, when you're moving your body, because that's the fuel, that's the fast track, because your mind sends out signals and your body is attracting things back into you by your energetic and your emotional state. So we want to begin to really feel into that. As you say to yourself, I am confident and I can do anything I put my mind to. It's very different than saying it I'm confident and I can do anything I put my mind to. If you can't see the, the video, I just totally collapsed my body and I kind of went into that defeated posture. Whereas before I was up, I was open, I was feeling it in my body. So we want to use these power statements. So what we're doing here is combining a clear intention. So that decision to feel a certain way, to show up a certain way with that elevated emotional state. So we want to feel that sense of confidence. We want to feel that groundedness, that happiness, whatever it is that you've kind of collected from that aligning your mind state. We want to begin to integrate that. So here's where it all becomes really efficient 
because you can do that while you're moving your body. You want to sit down and get into the vibe of your vision, align your mind with it. You know, okay, I have a big thing today. I want to see myself crushing it and getting a, you know, a gold star, <laughs> whatever it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to get that amazing report. I want to have that incredible sales conversation, whatever it is for you. You'd like to take a couple minutes to get into that. Or if you want to do prayer, journaling, whatever, to set aside five minutes for that. 10 minutes. You have 10 minutes to keep your body strong and healthy, right? So 10 minutes of movement, maybe that's yoga, exercise, et cetera, et cetera. But while you're doing the movement is while you're repeating your power statements because you're in your body, you're activating that elevated emotional state. You're using your mind because a lot of the times if our brain is already in go, go, go mode. It's like, okay, I got to do this and that five other things while you're doing your squats, right? It's like, I'm halfway working. No, I'm not, you know, I'm supposed to be exercising. So we want to make sure that you are using your mind to stay very present. And that way it becomes almost a moving meditation. So yes, awesome. The checklist, the, the Amplify Your Morning checklist is up on the screen. Would love for you to grab that because what we're going to do here is just take these three pillars, give you options to keep coming back to, to keep kind of refining and experiencing it for yourself. But it also gives you that framework of what to integrate and have it be something that you like. Because if you don't like it and it's not fun to you, you're not going to continue on. You spoke to that originally about it being a bit rigid and not being for you. So we want to make sure you have the tools and the, you know, the structure to be able to have what you need, mind, body, and spirit, to be able to take care of yourself, which has a huge ROE, return on energy, as well as ROI. And so that's what the checklist is all about. So I'd love for you to grab that. Yeah, that's awesome. It's uh, it's also in the show notes, wherever you're watching or listening, if you can't see the screen, it'll be down below. Uh, Megan, thank you for, thank you for giving that to us. And thank you for coming. This was awesome. Um, I love the idea of having a flexible morning routine, but one that still is designed to get you to move forward. And I think more importantly, what I've noticed is, like I said, the miracle morning was, was awesome for the time for what it was uh, outside of the rigidity once I kind of lost the things that I didn't want to do out of that and I added my own back in, I still see the difference between doing nothing, like you said, and at least doing the movement. The mm -hmm. the 70% increase in focus and, and clarity throughout the day. If you can have your day start on your terms, it makes all the difference in the world. And I think as as busy business leaders, entrepreneurs, if we don't show up like that for our teams and for our companies that's when disaster creeps in. So I always say the show is about business, mind, body, and spirit. And mm -hmm. I didn't tell Megan that beforehand, but she touched on three of the four, which obviously <laughs> affect the business. You can't have a thriving business without the other three. So make sure you grab the checklist and get it in check. Megan, thank you so much for being here. This was awesome. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And for those of you watching, listening, wherever you are, again, the checklist is in the show notes. Go, go grab that. See if you can up-level your morning routine. Take it to the next level. Get more out of every day without having to do more. That's even better. Do it in 15 minutes or less. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch.